five silent killers. These are the five killers that my staff identified. Some of you have experienced some of these things, and um, hopefully not all of these things, but um, chronic kidney disease, hyperthyroid disease, uh, diabetes mellitus, cardiac disease, and cancer. Hyperthyroidism. Hyper means too much. Hyper, too much thyroid. Thyroid, the accelerator of all the cells of your body. So, it's like, what's your car's accelerator doing? It should be running along at nice 35 miles an hour out here. Uh, but, if you're hyper, you're putting the pedal to the metal, and you're going really, really fast, you're using up more gasoline, and um, so you have to stop at the gas station more often, and every once in a while you get stopped by a cop. That's what thyroid does for our, our bodies, our cat's bodies, is they tell every cell of your body, it tells every cell of your body how quickly to run. And so you will see these hyperthyroid cats that are very, very thirsty because they're burning up a lot of energy and water, and so they'll drink a lot of water. They might vomit and diarrhea because you might, you might be stimulating that that GI tract to just over, over peristalsis, over move, and so they just might bring it up. Weight loss, that's, that's classic. And these guys, these guys are the ones that tend to lose weight a lot more quickly than the kidney cat does. Um, because you're burning it off. And they'll eat like they're no tomorrow when they first start out. So you've got this cat that's 15 years old, and people say, oh, she's like she was when she was a little kitten, except she just lost weight over the last year. And yeah, she did, because she's acting like a little kitten because her accelerator is all the way to the floor, um, and she's um, eating like crazy, and she's trying to keep up with herself. And then we get this secondary organ damage because we are making everything overwork, and so it burns out. Um, and when you get to this place, they'll start not feeling well. They will stop eating, overeating, and over drinking. They just don't feel well anymore because things aren't working. There's the thyroid hands on the trachea. This would be the nose up here. And in a normal cat, you can't feel them at all. In a hyperthyroid cat, you can sometimes feel those. Um, sometimes they get so heavy they drop down into the chest so you can't feel them. So I can't always say you can feel them in a physical examination. This is a hyperthyroid cat. She's going to try to eat the whole can of food in one bite. A little bit older disease, 12 to 14 years old. Interesting piece about hyperthyroidism, at least in some part, hyperthyroidism was a toxic product of the lining of the paper bags that stored our food years ago so that the oils in the food didn't leach out onto the paper. And that lining had some toxic principle to it. And so at least some of our cats are kind of moving into the generation that we're not seeing that, that one as much. But that's what, what caused that epidemic looking hyperthyroidism uh, five to 15 years. Beyond that, they started to identify that was a problem, and now we don't see that. We see a plastic bag now, um, and it's not that paper with the lining. This guy's T4 thyroid was 10.7. It should be 1 to 4. So you can imagine how far that gas pedal was down. A number of things that you can do to treat this thing, and some of you all have done these little syringes. The medication is called Tapazole. You can give that or, or they compound it into this little transdermal that will go right through the ear flap. And tapazole basically works like a thyroid trap. So the thyroid gland is still making too much thyroid, but you're trapping it before it gets a chance to work on a cell. So it's very dose dependent. If you miss, if you miss a dose, they are hyperthyroid for that period of time. And so this one becomes very dose-dependent. Dose also, there is a limit to how long you can use this. At about two years of age, the body begins to say, hey, this isn't something that's supposed to be in my body. And it'll form antibodies 
to trap the tapazole. And then it doesn't matter how much tapazole you use, it's not going to work anymore. So it's a good option for getting cats back into balance. For older, really older cats that you're not expecting them to go more than a couple of years, um, or for a chance to put your savings account together so that you can do something else. <laughs> so it's a really good, it's a really good option. This is an image of I-131. I-131 is a radiated iodine, so that's a, a radiation iodine, and they've given that to this cat. And these are not, these are not progressive, these are different cats. But you can see that the only place that the iodine accumulates is in the thyroid gland, this being the head and the jaw there. And there's those little thyroid glands, little feet going up like this. And the only place where that thing goes is right there. So you're, you're sending this radiation into their body, but it's all being sent right to that thyroid gland, and that radiation kills the thyroid gland, and then they aren't hyperthyroid anymore. And somebody just asked me today, well, don't cats need thyroid? And the answer is yes. <laughs> There's probably about half a dozen cats in the country right now that are getting some thyroid replacement because they seem to do better on it. We have one of them <laughs> and, uh, as a patient in the, in the practice. But in general, they do, they do just fine without thyroid. And we don't know what they use to regulate the, the function of their cells, but it's they do quite well without this. In a person or a dog, you'd replace them. You'd give them thyroid replacement. This is an interesting one that has happened in the last uh, probably 18 months to two years, and it's called YD. This little thing, again, we're gonna do chemistry here, and this is the uh, schematic of the thyroid hormone T3, which is broken down. Anyway, this is what the thyroid makes. And it has three iodines on it. One, two, three. And it's the only cell in your it's the only cell in your body that has iodine in it. Okay, so that's why when you give I-131, it all goes here. These become radiated iodines, um, and they this whole thing becomes radioactive and it kills everything. Um, YD has no iodine in it. So you could use tapazole on the, your cat's ear for a while to get them hypothyroid or, or normal thyroid while you're getting this thing going. And then it's going to take you about a year to get them eat the YD, really. But you do have to transition cats. They don't, they don't look at you like, oh, you put something down different. <laughs> Mr. Brown, he won't be up, she won't be up on your, on your neck saying, I love you, I love you. She'll be, she'll be biting your nose saying, where is my food? So you have to transition cats. But, but eventually, if you get them over onto the YD, you will starve the production of this because the thyroid gland can't make thyroid hormone if it doesn't have iodine. And so, although the gland is still set up to produce too much thyroid, it doesn't have the building blocks to do it, and your cat is perfectly normal. It can't eat anything else because anything that has iodine will defeat the, the purpose here. But it's a very nice long-term option for these guys, and you have to feed them anyway, so it's not terribly, it's, it's more expensive than just a regular food, but um, it's not as expensive as the $1,600 I-131 treatment. I think the tapazole's running about a dollar a, a dose right now, so mm -hmm. you could be into $30 to $60 with tapazole you know, as you're treating them. So that, this makes a nice, a nice option. This is the only thing we had when I came out of school was to do surgery on these thyroids, removing these thyroids. This is the thyroid gland right here, and this right here is a little parathyroid gland. It sits right on top of it. You can see it on both sides here. Parathyroid gland regulates your calcium, and you need calcium for muscles to move, and guess what? Your heart's one of the muscles that moves, and so you need calcium. And they are supposed to have separate blood supplies, but every once in a while they share a blood supply. So you go and take that thyroid gland out, and you've killed the parathyroid because you've taken this blood supply out. I haven't done a thyroid sur surgery because these other options are really good um, in about five years, but in 31 years I had one of those cats that, that the parathyroid was gone and we had to do, we didn't lose the cat, but we had to do calcium um, therapy on this cat. And 
about once every two years, you know, she ended up in real crisis and we had to come in and give her IV calcium and so forth. Um, and she did very well, but it wasn't what we were hoping for. So it's not, uh, it's not your best option. And really price-wise, um, it is less expensive than I-131, but you're still talking about $1,200 for a surgery. So not really, it doesn't save you much, and we have some other options. So treatment options, stabilize the heart if needed, because guess what? If your heart's going really, really fast, it might get uncoordinated because all the electrical currents get mixed up in it and it might get uncoordinated. Um, then we have to regulate the overproduction of, of thyroid so we get things back down and into, into order. And then we need to assess organ function, and this is really, really important. And again, SDMA, we have SDMA. Um, sometimes you're hiding other diseases. <clears throat> Let's say your kidney is working very well, but you're telling it to work overtime. So you're gonna burn it out quicker, but it looks like it's doing okay. And you, and you treat the thyroid gland, and all of a sudden you've got kidney disease. So with the SDMA now, on my, on my initial workup, I can tell whether I'm going to have some issues as I, as I slow the kidney function down. And then either treat with the I-131, either stay with the tapazole, treat with the I-131 surgery, or the YD now we have as an option. And this is a little kitty cat in the little isolation ward of the I-131. They have to stay in isolation for about... Uh, four or five days depend on which therapy they're using and this one she's got a little window here and they've got gerbils running around outside and they've got bird cages and stuff like that they really are treated very very nicely but anybody that goes in there has to be dressed in radiation suits and, and you have to be um, certified to do that so that's not something we do we we have several options to send uh, cats to nice places where they can get good care this is before and after I-131. You can just see the drawn, kind of kind of sleepy. She's gotten toxic. And we're bright and fat now, doing very well. 